Hello everybody, how's it going? Welcome to Fuel Power and welcome to the National Motor Museum here at Bewley. We are here today for Simply Italian, which of course means only one thing. Yes, we are in the Fiat Panda 100 HP. It's a great car to come to an Italian event in, don't you know? But yes, we have come here in convoy with Genevieve's mum, who's in the 500 hybrid next to me. Genevieve's obviously 1.2 Fiat 500 lounge. And of course, do you remember the Abarth 500 that I reviewed on the channel not that long ago? The Golf liveried one? Yes, Tom's Abarth, that's also here as well, and that's convoyed in with us, but he's piled up somewhere over there with the Abarth 500 Club. But yes, there's plenty of interesting cars here to check out, which aren't necessarily the supercars here at Simply Italian, which I think a lot of people who aren't me, who aren't slightly weird, slightly strange, will probably focus on. So in this video, we're going to be having a look at some of the not-so-supercars here at the Simply Italian Day. Of course, that being said, they may not be supercars, but they are very much, in their own right, supercars. I'm trying to play on words here, I'm not sure it's working. The first car of the show, then, is this 1962 Alfa Romeo Giulietta Sprint, styling by Batoni, and doesn't it look glorious? All these classical lines, the rear fin look, that classical badge on there as well. Steel wheels. A look around the front. Massive spotlights. Tiny indicators. The Alfa Romeo Spider 2000 looks absolutely stunning. Pinning Furia the styling. The attention to detail just everywhere on cars like this such as the door handle that looks magnificent we have a look the gear stick sticking out just there the wood rim steering wheel will go around and have a proper look at that 58,800 miles of course these things incredibly classical italian sports cars i adore the styling of these things wouldn't mind having one in the garage someday Although I fully understand that it's probably likely to be a dream garage. Yeah, this thing is absolutely glorious. Of course, the bonnet on it folds towards the front rather than up towards the windscreen. And under there is the beating heart of the beast. Funny enough, it is a very small four-seater by the looks of it. So you might have to have no legs to get in the back. But nonetheless, it is actually a four-seater. Which is quite surprising, really. We have another Alfa Romeo Spider. This time, this one's from the 90s. It's a Twin Spark 16 valve. I really do like the way that the rear light goes all the way across the back. Of course, the brake light just there, the height required. As per legislation, we have a look in there. Still quite classical in styling, have with that typical sort of 90s twist. One thing I do like is the way that the bonnet is incredibly smooth. It sort of glides all over the front, and then obviously you've got the two holes here for the lights on this side, and obviously mirroring on the other side. It's a perfect modern interpretation of the classic spider, which of course we just filmed, it's just behind it. This Alfa Romeo GT 3.2 litre V6 is absolutely stunning. It's another car I love the style of. In fact, there are many Alfa Romeos that I absolutely adore the styling of. You just can't beat them for the design department. The way the nose all slopes down, that's classical V-shaped grill with the inserts in there. Wouldn't mind having a GT at some point either. Italian job fans rejoice, we have found an Alfa Romeo Giulia Super. Of course the Italian job fans must rejoice at this because of course these things were the police cars in the Italian job film in 1969. This is a 1971 car, left hand drives are clearly imported. Glorious seats, look at those classical dials in there, even a wooden dashboard. Go around and have a look at the front. 
that classical four light front. The wheels actually are really quite small comparatively. Of course, classic as well, three box design. So engine, passenger compartment, luggage compartment, easy peasy. This is a 1.6. Must have a fair bit of poke in it, especially compared to other cars of the time. I believe this uh, for a Spider is a little bit later than the one we saw earlier on. But if we have a look at it, it still retains very much of the classical styling cues. We've still got chrome front bumpers that offset front number plate, of course, as many Alfa Romeos have. It's even got a shell badge in there, showing their support for their favourite fuel supplier. Woodrim steering wheel, which of course, we get a little bit worn, but that clearly shows this car is driven. In fact, if we go around and have a look. Electronic aerial. How many miles has it done? 16,026 kilometers. It's interesting that it reads in kilometers rather than miles considering it's right hand drive. You might well have gone around the clock once. It's hard to tell with cars of this age because they only put uh, certain amounts of digits in there. This here is a 1975 Alfa Romeo 2000. It looks quite similar to the Giulia, however, I imagine it's a tiny bit more luxurious inside, especially given that it's got a central armrest in the back. Still got a classical wood rim steering wheel. Is that a wooden centre console? It's quite hard to see with the lighting on it, but it looks like it is. Yes, got a little tiny quarter light here which opens and provides fresh air. Indicator on the front wing. It's quite sort of subtle really. But yeah, keeping that front end that's very similar to the Julia. I do love the way how the older badges is uh, style designed Alfa Romeo Milano of course talking about to where the Alfa Romeos originated from which of course was Milan in Italy we have the Alfa Romeo 145 1.7 valve I believe this is a boxer engine quite similar to the one that we saw at the Jilks Carriage Cafe for the weird car Twitter beat as I said there I absolutely adore the way the window line sort of curves on up and round and through and gives that sort of roofless look at the back of it. I always thought these things were very well styled. I think they're based on the same platform as the Fiat Punto. However, when designing this compared to the Punto, Alfa Romeo really went to town with the, uh, the angles and the way everything points towards you and just generally, I think it's a nicer car than that Punto of the same era. I love the way how the centre console actually faces in towards the driver which is incredibly helpful obviously a bit more expensive to manufacture because you've got to keep changing them depending on which side of the car the driver is on however it's just all those little details that add up and make for one excellent experience amazingly I walked past this because I went straight to that Alfa Romeo Spider but look we've got this one here I'm also to highlight this one because it's k Road, which means it's from the 1990s have a look around it and see what's what's quite different to the other classical ones. So you've got plastic bumpers, still got that droopy exhaust, obviously a bit more reflector action going on in the lights and the fact that the whole beam goes all the way across relates quite well to the later spider which of course we've got one just there to have a look at. Let's have a look in here of course, um, no wood rim steering wheel anymore, we've still got the gear stick sticking out in the same exact place as the other previous model so really it hasn't changed all that much even throughout all this time the front end looks to be extended ever so slightly it's lost the lamp coverings over here instead they're a bit more i guess traditional in style as i've already mentioned we're at the national motor museum at Bewley, but this little alfa romeo spider here has come all the way from the channel island of jersey for this event it might well be here just on a hard day and just happen to fit this in, but it's lovely that we see cars from elsewhere that obviously isn't the mainland UK. But next to it, Alfa Romeo GTV 1982, 2.5 litre engine I think is standard in these. This one looks like it may be modified somewhat with a chrome or stainless steel gear knob, obviously buckety seats, roll cage, 
completely stripped out in the back there. These look to be semi-slick racing tyres on there. Toyo tyres, it would seem. It used to have a sunroof, but that's been uh, riveted in. And obviously the bias is quick, easy access to remove. One thing I do like about it is the bonnet scoop, of course, is there to let in a lot more air than otherwise would be allowed in there. Yeah, these things, I think, look really very good. Especially with the way that the wheels stick out a little bit further than maybe you would do as standard. As I say, this one's been modified, so clearly quite a bit of time and effort's gone into it. Including riveting up the washer for the headlights. Next to the GTV Jersey Registered Spider, we have this Alfa Romeo 2000 GT. Or at least I believe that's what it is. 2 litre engine. Let's have a look in there. Oh gosh, the headrests, a little bit between the actual seat and the headrest itself, has got wood in it. Oh my word, that's amazing. Wooden interior, wood room steering wheel. I like the little uh, champagne-y type glass, all those dials, the classic dials and the smell. Ooh. It's even got a USB socket down there, but that's quite subtle. Of course the sunroof would be perfect for a day like today. Bit of a breeze, nice and sunny and hot. I'm not wearing my fuel power branded hoodie today it's just too warm for it the Alfa Romeo Brera then this one belongs to a chap who seems to be called Dazza as it says by the bottom number plate just down here these things I think will forever look good it's like a little coupe type hatchback they're quite unusual in the fact that they are so long but it's essentially just a little hatchback but if we have a look around it again with the interior facing towards the driver rear spoiler it's a good looking car this i've always liked these cars a perfect demonstration of a ferrari t shelf there this is a 1978 alpha sud i believe they are introduced in about 1971 and were alfa romeo's very first front wheel drive vehicle Obviously, traditionally, Alfa Romeo were rear-wheel drive only, but these cars broke the trend and went front-wheel drive. Right, let's have a quick look. It's an Alfa Sud Super, mustard yellow colour, but in Italian, it's Gallio Pompei 126. Sounds better in Italian, it has to be said. Apparently, according to this sheet that the owner has provided in the windscreen, there are 87 Alpha Suds of all types, and there's only 9 left. This is one of them, with the current MOT. This is the only one that's left that was registered in 1978. Wow, a true survivor then. Couldn't really ignore this particular car due to the stunning livery. Of course, the Tricolori flag on it. And that stone that looks somewhat like the uh, Italia logo for the obviously the airline company quadrifolio badge but look at these wheels those are amazing woodroom steam wheel left hand drive so again probably an import oh i like that how the flag has changed size on the boot lid compared to the bonnet and next to it a julia super again with the quadrifolio little clover leaf there together these two cars are absolutely gorgeous. This car is always a highlight. I've seen it before at Festival Italia at Brands Hatch. Now for Romeo Junior Z. Left hand drive, so again, probably an import. It's incredibly narrow when you look at it from the back, but I imagine it's got quite a bit of power underneath it looking at the uh, size of the bonnet on this car. Love the central mounted gear stick. Maserati just started up. Looks like it may be a four-seater usually, but it looks like the rear seat's been taken out of this one. I'm well, fairly certain I saw these at Festival Italia last year. But if not, there were two that were very similarly lined up like this last year. It was an Abarth and a classic Fiat 500. Both were in yellow, so I have that strong suspicion that these are the exact same cars I saw there. But look inside this one. Noddy this car's called. Likely named after the popular TV series with the character of Noddy, the little car that uh, 
actually bears a striking resemblance to a car that is very much based on the Fiat 500. Like in the little pool ball type gear stick or gear knob. Of course these things rear engine 500cc hence Fiat 500 name or Cinquecento in Italian. Classic picnic box on the back. Woven of course. <laughs> Luigi from Cars. I was a big fan of the uh, Cars franchise. Arguably still am. Who doesn't like it? Big old exhaust on there. Actually it looks quite large for the size of engine. Might be producing a bit more power. Yes, Abarth 595 next to it of course going to town with the yellow Abarth Owners Club. Sussex Surrey and Hampshire. They're down here today as well. This is a Fiat Coupe. It's a 16 valve turbo. I believe these things are five cylinders so they produce a bit of an epic noise to say the least. Starting by Pininfarina. Now, I believe the platform of this particular car the uh, Cooper that is not this very specific green car in front of me is shared with the Alpha Spider and of course it's uh, Coupe sibling. They look very similar especially when you're taking the side profile the front end with the lights sort of enclosed by the bonnet. These two are two very gorgeous cars if you have a look at them. We'll stand back a little bit and just admire. This Fiat 131 Mirafiori we've seen before. We've seen at Brooklyn's Italian Day, at Festival Italia. It's a car I've seen quite a bit of. It's fairly distinctive with a bit of lack of peel on the back. CL spec, 1400cc. The size has been lowered somewhat. Aftermarket Abarth wheels, of course, been to retro rides as well. It's a lovely looking old car. I like that it's got the uh, gear stick selection down on the, on the centre console. It tells you exactly where the gears are in this car. Perfect for anyone who's not used to it. Before it leaves, the Alfa Romeo Mito. Especially what Genovese 500 would look like if it had its life as an Alfa Romeo Mito. Orange and black theme all the way. Oh, really? Whilst we're still here, there's actually quite a few 131s just here. This one's a Super Mira Fiori. This one 131S. And this one here is also a Super. This one looks very, very nice actually. It's probably been restored at some point in its life. Lovely mud flaps. Left hand drive, left hand drive, are they all left hand drive? Nope, those two over there are right hand drive, so these two are probably imports from Italy or Portugal or Spain or somewhere like that. This little 500 is about to head off. Sounds very, very sweet actually. It's funny just see how small it is. I mean, the Mini is small, but the 500, the original one, even smaller. I can see why these vehicles are so popular in Italy. Especially with their incredibly narrow streets. I couldn't really ignore this Abar 500 for a couple of reasons. One we've seen it in plenty of other shows and it's quite frankly a stunning vehicle. Just before we film it though. Couldn't ignore that either. But also, I've reviewed this very car on the channel. Last time when I drove it, it had 182 horsepower. It's been modified quite extensively. These things have got about 135 horsepower as standard. That is up by about 25 horsepower if you have the SS kit, or SASA, depending where you are from. This one's running 182 as standard now. I think it's had quite a bit of work since I drove it. It's now running about 200 horsepower, which quite frankly is staggering in a car of this size. Ever since you've done the last video, it's had a few upgrades. It's had a Garrett Turbo put on with a Garrett Sports Cat. Uh, I've taken the Ram Air tray off because with all the uh, heat trays gone, it rattled about, so that's been gone. Uh, it's not much been done. It's had a tune put on. It's running around 200 horsepower at the moment. Uh, once it's had its new ECU fitted, because it's gone a bit wrong at the moment, it should be in the range of 220 to 230 horsepower. So it's going to be quite rapid. Yes, if you haven't already seen my review of this vehicle, please do check that out. 
there'll be a link somewhere at the top of the screen just somewhere up there this is a glorious classic Lancia I'm not quite sure on the model but look at those wheels what size are they doesn't really say that well at least it's an old sort of timey tire dog so I can't quite translate it in my head at the minute but we have a look in there this is beautiful what's an amazing looking machine it's got the bonnet slightly open the window is also slightly open on the other side so maybe we'll get a slightly clearer look at the interior I've always got a soft spot for the old Lancias but this one, this one's really quite different I don't think I've ever seen one of these before in fact it looks like a lot of people haven't seen this before the uh, lock has been taped over also every time we come here we get a shot of the Bewley bus going about its daily business Maserati facelifted version sets off I think it's called the GT that one Alfa Romeo 166 with the traditional Alfa Romeo wheels on it these things usually heard sounding extremely nice watch this for the headlights it's amazing how small the headlights actually are in comparison to the rest of the body of the car but also one thing I do like about this particular car is the way that the colour sort of changes as you move around it's quite similar to the monogram MG ZTTs I saw well, literally yesterday as of right now at the Pride of Longbridge event at surprisingly Longbridge they were sort of green and purple and changed whereas this is more blue and changed to silver depending on which lighting you're looking at it in and next to this 166 we have a Lancia Delta not a HF Integrale what it is is for sale six and a half thousand pounds on nearest offer Lancia Delta 1500 HB this car has been owned for 11 years by the current owner bought it as an ex demonstrator from the dealer the car has been wax oiled from new only been driven when the sun was shining so if you're looking to get a classic Lancia this one looks like it's a pretty good bet to have actually a lot of Lancias tend to suffer with rust which really is a common problem of many vehicles in the 60s, 70s, 80s and even 90s but this, this is absolutely stunning it's got a sort of subtle undertone to it and I just admire that massively about it the interior looks gorgeous I kind of want this not sure I'd be allowed to have another car on the drive at the minute and also I can't take two Italian cars to an Italian event because there's only one of me and of course Genevieve has a 500 as well but uh, I do really quite like this this is really quite a rare car in this country because we simply do not get this here in the UK not under Fiat, not under Alfa Romeo not under anything because of course Lancia never really a company that came to the UK other than with Chrysler who advertised obviously Lancia cars but with a Chrysler badge essentially but no we didn't get this car even as a Chrysler this is the Lancia Musa it's quite an interesting looking vehicle actually I, can't, I could see if Fiat were to make a, a a 600 multipler new sort of style based on the old classic one it would possibly be based upon this platform I think this has got a 1.4 liter engine that classic face and it looks like this car may have come from Holland yes imported from Holland in 2013 it's left hand drive auto start stop two color leather seats Grand Lucia panoramic roof my pronunciation may not be great it's 2012 even 1.4 16 valve so it probably shares the same engine that my Fiat's got funny enough obviously it's a bigger car it's a bit more grunts the color is supposedly called gold doesn't quite look that in this light but it might just be the grass reflecting up onto it but yes a very much a rarity here in the UK 
it's one of these cars that you don't see and it's like I kind of want to drive it I kind of want to drive this next to them so is a car that needs no introduction you know exactly what it is it's a Lancia Fulvia 1.3 S or something like that slightly odd way of writing it Lancia HF love these on the windscreen wipers they look fantastic have a quick look around left hand drive I don't know if these are only available in left-hand drive. Lance, you were very, very strange when it came to driving positions in their cars. I think one of their 1930s cars, called the Aprilia, was right-hand drive only, despite Italy being left-hand drive, so that's slightly weird. But yes, there's Fulvia 3, Monte Carlo. Sticker across these cars very much competed at Monte Carlo. Little coupe style. It's a lovely thing, I love the twin tone colours. Next to it is also a Fulvia. It's a Series 2 Bellina. It's been unrestored as well. 1300cc, 86 horsepower, front wheel drive, four disc brakes. Two twin Solex carburettors. With a Lancia Motor Club. That's a lovely looking car as well, right hand drive as well, which suggests it's been here from new. So that makes it even more staggering. There's Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Yes, if it's been here since new, that makes the fact that this car is completely unrestored, quite frankly, staggering. This car we've also seen before at Festival Italia, it's a Lancia Fulvia Sport 1.6 S HF. Right hand drive, look at that gear stick mounting, all the dials and the smell, again something I can't show you through obviously your phone screen, tablet screen, PC screen, whatever, but the smell is glorious, just have a quick look, yellow wheels makes this quite distinctive, well, that's yeah, it looks like an Y, so that would probably be an Y, I'm not quite sure about this model myself, have a quick look around, Lancia, the power to express yourself, yes indeed. Lancia Gamma, sorry it's a Gamma, not a Ypsilon, that's the uh, small little Fiat 500 based one. I like the rectangular headlights on this particular car, the grille looks very very sweet. This car is an example of an early Series 1 model which used a single twin choke. There we go, Gamma Berlina or Saloon. As you can see everybody's sort of heading out now. Over here is a Chrysler Delta, which of course, as I mentioned earlier, with the Musa, which is just there. Lancia only came to the UK as the Chrysler brand. You can tell this one is a Chrysler because they've still got it written on the steering wheel. But it is very much, obviously, just the Lancia Delta with a Chrysler badge on it. Can't ignore the Abarth 124 Spider. It uses the same 1.4 litre T-Jet engine that's in the Abarth 500. Very cool little car that, do like them myself, would quite like one, but uh, again, time, space, money, etc, etc. Here we have a lineup of three pandas, one being a classic 4x4, looks like either a supporter or someone who has been in Auto Italia magazine, part of the Fiat Worldwide Owners and Enthusiasts Club on Facebook. I believe they've got their own website as well. Got an inclinometer there on the dashboard, of course, Austrian built 4x4 system in these Fiat Pandas. These things are just absolutely epic. They're like a little mountain goat, they can just go pretty much anywhere. Unlike a lot of 4x4s, of course, are massive, heavy things, this is still under a ton. Absolutely brilliant. Next to it is his modern 4x4 counterpart, known as the Fiat Panda Cross. And then the more standard panda, with a giant panda in the driver's seat. And a little panda holding a little panda in the passenger seat. Oh, I love that. Of course it's black and white as well, so it is very much a panda. Keeping with the Italian theme of the day, here is Jeremy Clarkson's Fiat Panda Limousine from the Top Gear Limo Challenge. It's one litre engine under there, apparently powered by a rodent of some sort called Gerald. 
being three door, of course, there's only really two ways you can get in through this door or through the door on the other side. Of course, because it's now here at Beauty as an attraction, they've made it into a bit of a feature, a bit of a seat. But previously, it would have been full width out here and all this was just uh, the way through to the back. Apparently it's longer than a London bus. What's quite ingenious about this for those who haven't seen is that Jeremy, or at least he got an engineer to make a little track that went all the way from here up to the seat just here. One thing that's quite interesting and of note is the fact that the back end is made up of two Fiat Pandas and I'd imagine that's because of strength, structure, rigidity and everything like that. But also you got to remember this was built at a time when these pandas were still fairly cheap as chips to buy second hand so that's one of the reasons why they would have used one of those as a car for uh, making to a limo so they can cut it up and not upset too many people. But again Top Gear's not really shied away from upsetting owners or enthusiasts of cars in the past have they let's face it but uh, yes I think this is a magnificent thing. I was too busy looking at the pandas earlier and completely missed this, but this is a P-Reg Fiat Punto. I actually really like the styling of this particular generation of Punto. Shares the platform with the 145 that we saw earlier, and yes, I know I said the 145 is a slightly better style of car, and I still think it very much is, but I don't think the Punto looks at all bad. Still got that sort of floaty roof line look to it. It's got Abarth wheels on it, this one, side skirt. Obviously got a sunroof as well, which is very common in 90s cars. It's even got headlight washers. But yes, I love the smooth look to the bonnet this car's got. It's been lowered a little bit as well, so a bit more uh, handling performance, I would imagine. I must say, I really do like these cars. And last but not least, three out of four of the cars we convoyed here with. We also convoyed with Tom's Golf Abarth, but he was with the Abarth Owners Club, so we were directed over here with the Panda, Genevieve's 500 with the orange stripes at the end, and her mum's 500, which is in the middle. This one I'm yet to review, but it will happen at some point, hence why we've got here on the windscreen, coming soon to fuel power, very exciting. But yes, here's Pogo. Certainly been having quite a lot of people have a look at uh, this car today. And we've also got these little wheel stands for it as well, which uh, I picked up at Bingley Hall for the Mini, but ironically have not used on the Mini yet, but they also fit the Panda, so I'm using them here, because why not? I may as well use them. BS yes, Pogo the Panda, 100 HP, 1.4 litre fire engine. There are about four of these here today. Mine's the only one left now, because all the others have gone home. One was for sale for about two and a half thousand pounds which is kind of standard for the sort of Panda 100 HP range at the minute, price-wise, second-hand. Yeah, absolutely adore this car. It's had a great day out, I've had a good day out. Genevieve's mum's car is a 1.0-litre hybrid. It's quite a new model, 2020 as well, so... New style of fog lights, or side running lights. The interior is quite different, actually, from Genevieve's 500, which, of course, is... Uh, quite a bit earlier than this, hers is 2009, but yeah the interior differs quite dramatically. And of course, just to finish off, here's Genevieve's one with a show plate on now, obviously an orange to match of course the theme of the car, looking rather spectacular here at Bewley today. I've just sat inside the car now because as everyone else is leaving, I think so must I, so uh, I'm going to bring this video to a bit of a close. So thank you very much for watching. If you have enjoyed this, bit of a highlight of not really supercars here at uh, Beauty Simply Italian Day. Don't forget to leave a like, comment down below, let me know which was your favourite car here. And of course, if you want to see more car-based content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button because there's plenty more videos coming up on the channel very soon. That's it from me. I've been Joe for Fuel Power. Thanks very much for watching. See you in the next video. Until then, for now, I shall say farewell. If you have a favourite make of car, it might be one of those we have an event for, so please check our website for details. On the right is Little Beauty.
are adventure playgrounds for the under 14s. Don't worry if you're 